Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will see the very important protocol, the point to point protocol. It is simply called as PPP. Now let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we will know about the byte oriented protocol. We will know about the frame format of PPP and we will understand the character stuffing or byte stuffing in PPP. Let's start the session with the byte oriented protocols. We know the byte oriented protocol simply views the frame as a collection of bytes or character and that's why it is also called as character oriented approach. We have basically three protocols, bisync which is binary synchronous communication protocol which we have seen in the previous lecture and today we are going to talk about the PPP point to point protocol and obviously in the next lecture we will be talking about DDCMP which is digital data communications message protocol. In today's lecture we are going to talk about PPP that is the point to point protocol. Point to point protocol is a data link layer protocol and to be precise this is a wide area network protocol. PPP is a WAN protocol and which is commonly run over internet links. Whenever we say internet links it means between two routers PPP protocol is widely used. So we can also say that it is a WAN protocol. Basically PPP has two main usages. This protocol is widely used in broadband communications having heavy loads and high speeds and obviously internet is the area where it has heavy load and high speeds and at the same time it is also used to transmit multi protocol data between two directly connected computers to be precise point to point devices. Point to point devices means between two routers PPP is widely used because it is not a simple LAN protocol like Ethernet. PPP is a WAN protocol. Let's see the frame format now. The frame format of PPP include the starting is the flag which is of 8 bits and then comes the address which is of 8 bits. Then comes the control field which is of 8 bits and then the protocol part which is of 16 bits and then the payload part which is a variable length payload and whatever we receive from the upper layer that is the network layer will be there in the payload part and then comes the checksum which is of 16 bits. And finally the flag sequence which is the end sequence. In the format of PPP we can see the flag appears in the starting of the frame and in the ending of the frame. The flag is the beginning sequence and this flag is the ending sequence. Let's see the frame format in detail. The frame format of PPP starts with the flag. The flag which is of 1 byte. 1 byte means 8 bits. We know there are two flags. One is in the beginning and the other one is at the end. And this one byte information marks the beginning and the end of the frame. And the pattern of the flag is just like the HDLC. So 0, 6 ones followed by 0. And this is what the starting and the ending sequence. And then comes the address field. And this is the one byte information which is normally said to be all ones in case of broadcast. We know this is also of 8 bits and it is a one byte information. And then comes the control field. But this is a one byte information and set to a constant value as 1160. And then comes the protocol field which is very unique in PPP. So this protocol it can be one or two bytes information. One byte means 8 bits or two bytes means 16 bits. So it can be a 16 bit information that define the type of data contained in the payload field. So in the payload field it knows what type of data or what type of protocol that is used and that kind of information is provided in the protocol part. So this is a new field that is introduced in PPP format. Then comes the payload and which is obviously a variable length payload and this carries the data from the network layer and the maximum length of the payload is 1500 bytes. However, this may be negotiated between the endpoints of the communication. Say in a WAN protocol, the negotiation can happen between two routers and these two routers are going to decide upon what is the maximum length of the payload is. And finally, the checksum field and it is of 16 bits or 2 bytes. In the bit oriented protocol HDLC, we have seen CRC technique as the error detection technique. In BISync also we have seen CRC as the error detection technique. In PPP it uses checksum. It is also known as internet checksum. Don't worry about the error detection techniques guys. In the error detection lectures we will be talking about LRC, VRC, internet checksum or simply checksum and cyclic redundancy check that is CRC. And that's it about the frame format. But there is a problem here. The sequence of this flag that is 0, 6, 1, 0 and the ending sequence is also the same that can appear in the data part. So how this is going to be overcome? 
So this is going to be overcome with the help of character stuffing or byte stuffing because PPP is a byte oriented protocol. Character stuffing. We know that the flag sequence may appear in the payload part, so it has to be handled. So we are going to add one extra byte of information to handle the situation. Byte stuffing or character stuffing in PPP is the process of adding one extra byte whenever there is a flag sequence appear in the payload. If we see the flag sequence which is 0, 6, 1, 0, if it is appearing in the payload, one extra byte of information is added just to enable the receiver to understand that it is not the ending sequence so that the receiver can construct the frame by just removing this extra byte and this frame can be exactly like the frame it was created by the sender. And that's it guys. I hope now you are clear with the byte oriented protocol. You know the frame format of PPP. You understood the significance of character stuffing or byte stuffing in PPP. I hope you guys have learned something new today and thank you for watching.